Next, it will be Estienne, and she'll be presenting Halle Selassie. Hi everyone and happy Emancipation Day. Today also marks my country Benin's Independence Day, so um, celebrating twice as hard. I don't know if you ever heard of Dick Gregory, but he's one of my favorite authors. In one of his books called Defining Moments in Black History, Reading Between the Lies, he talks about how, and I quote, in our Western system of education, we are taught that when teaching history, we must be objective. But what they forget to tell you is that the telling of the domination of Western culture over the other peoples of the world is not objective at all. I personally never understood why some of the storytellers of our history were just teaching us how they used to try to erase it. Then, these same storytellers we pretend to hand you a shot so you can write it back, but all they do is erase it even more when they make it look like our history began with them. Pretending black history started with slavery is the same thing as pretending our parents didn't exist before us. Hard to believe, but yes, your parents did have a life before you. And even if you weren't to exist, they would have continued to exist. Just as our history existed before slavery and continued to exist after slavery. Our ancestors were kings and queens, and dogs don't make cats. Therefore, so are we. That brings me to talk about one of them, Haile Selassie I, the last emperor of Ethiopia, the only African country that hasn't been colonized. His original name is Safari, and he is the key figure of Rastafarianism in Jamaica. He was the first dignitary to be received here in Montreal for Expo 67, Soissonset, and was also offered a state visit. Thank you for listening. Merci, Ancien. J'ai appris beaucoup. Prochaine, ça va être Jelly. Il va présenter le personnage Malcolm X. Bonjour tout le monde, bonjour. Pour commencer, je vais vous parler de Malcolm X. Malcolm X est quelqu'un qui a beaucoup comme combattu pour le droit des Noirs dans son pays. Pour moi, Malcolm X est quelqu'un de très brave, car il a changé son nom. De base, il s'appelait Malcolm Lido, et il a changé son nom, car il était tanné de porter le nom des personnes qui ont frappé ses ancêtres, discriminé ses ancêtres, pendu ses ancêtres, ils ont tué, ils ont maltraité. Il a pris son courage à deux mains et il a changé son nom. Les parents de Malcolm X se sont rencontrés à Montréal peu de temps avant sa naissance. Il faut savoir que la vie de Malcolm X n'a pas été très facile. Il perd son père très jeune et fut incarcéré pour possession de stupéfiants. À sa sortie de prison, il, est très, il intègre Nation of Islam une organisation musulmane dans laquelle il lutte pour le droit des Noirs. Après des tensions avec les dirigeants de l'organisation, il quitte Nation of Islam et fut assassiné un an après. Après son meurtre, trois participants de Nation of Islam sont déclarés coupables du meurtre. Je ne sais pas si vous avez remarqué, mais à chaque fois que quelqu'un essaie de, essaie de prouver que... comme Essayer de montrer aux gens que les Noirs aussi, nous, on a de la valeur, ils se fait tuer. C'est toujours comme ça. Il faut que ça arrête. C'est pas bien. Merci. And next, well, first of all, thank you, Jelly, for that passionate speech. Next, we will have Pierre presenting Lumumba. Well, 
Bonjour, euh, aujourd'hui je vais vous parler de Patrice Emery Lumumba. C'est le tout premier premier ministre de la République démocratique du Congo. C'est un héros pour le pays, c'est un héros aussi pour la politique africaine, c'est un héros pour la, la jeunesse d'aujourd'hui et c'est un héros pour la jeunesse de demain. Patrice Emery Lumumba a combattu la domination de l'Empire belge dans le pays et a et a combattu pour que les Belges quittent le territoire. C'était un, un grand politicien qui se battait pour sa patrie et qui aimait beaucoup son pays. Patrice Emery Lumumba fut assassiné le 17 janvier 1961 car les Belges jugeaient qu'il était, était trop dérangeant à la domination de, pour, pour leur colonisation. Patrice Emery Lumumba est venu à Montréal pour visiter l'hôtel de ville il a rencontré l'ancien maire, M. Sarto Fournier, et il était aussi le bras droit de Joseph Kassaboubou, le premier président du Congo, et la, le maire ami de Joseph Mobutu. C'était un grand homme, il, il, adorait, il adorait le Congo, il adorait l'Afrique. Merci Patrice. Thank you so much, Pierre. And next, we have Sophia, who will be presenting Hildred Lindahl Hunt, one of the women in the domestic schemes. Hello. What if possible? This is an admission criteria for immigrants in Canada. This changed in 1954 because there weren't enough domestic, so the federal government basically encouraged women of color to move to Canada and work as domestic. So, in 1955, 25 Beijing women came to Canada to work as domestic and get an education. But even though the Canadian Immigration Act passed in 1924 that claimed that black people weren't suited for the climate and would have a hard time adjusting was lifted, these women and their husbands still face discrimination. Hildred Lindell Hunt, one of the domestic women, got her French course diploma and it was handed to her with her race written on it. Her, when her husband applied for a job, they rejected him because he was black. These instances of racism were caused by strict social norms that practically forced people to work a specific job or live in a specific neighborhood because of their ethnicity. These women got by, got married, and had a husband and had a career thanks to their determination, not because Canada helped them. Their stories are of course a lesson on perseverance and willpower, but they should also serve as a reminder that Canada had racist laws that impeded black people to come here, and still has social norms that put people of color at a disadvantage. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sophia. Last, but certainly not least, is Ariel, who is presenting her speech titled, Are We the U.S.? Are we the U.S.? By raising a hand, how many of you have heard of Miss Rosa Parks in school? Okay, and now how many of you have heard of Miss Viola Desmond? Are we the US? Would you believe me if I said they were like the same person except in different places? And would you believe me if I said that this person you see here on this $10 bill is Miss Viola Desmond herself? How did a black woman end up on a Canadian $10 bill? Well, Viola Desmond was a Canadian civil rights activist and a businesswoman in Nova Scotia who eventually closed her business and moved to Montreal to study business in college. Back in the day, there was areas reserved for white people in the theater. This was a law in Canada. Are we the US? One day, while she was still living in Nova Scotia, Ms. Desmond decided to go to the theater and happened to sit in a white reserved seat. She was asked to leave and refused. Logically, she paid for a ticket, so why should she leave? This opinion was not shared with the Canadian law enforcement at the time. So Viola Desmond was sent to jail for that same act. Are we the US? 
Later, she was pardoned because Canada woke up and realized that she was mistreated due to a racist law that was in place at the time. She's a role model for many black people like me. She represents woman's true power, yet not a word about her in schools. It makes you wonder why. I, for one, attended a Canadian school that talk about Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Wait, are we the US? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Et récemment, on a perdu un jeune de la communauté. Recently, we lost a young gentleman in the community. I just want to say my sincere condolences to Sosoberg, his family and his friends. Mes condolences sincères à votre famille et vos amis. I also want to acknowledge uh, Miss Bertley also recently passed away, and Miss Bertley was the one who was running the Garvey Institute at the NCC. She did a lot for the, for the young kids in the community and across Montreal. Esme, from Barbados, who lived right, right over here, who had a little dog called Lady, was a very also inspiration to the community, and Esme always looked out for us as kids, and even as adults, we always had conversations. She was funny, she made us laugh. So my condolences to Esme. And then how can, how can you not forget little, little Willie? Little Willie Izzard was also part of the jazz and also did a lot for the community. It was also another funny character in Little Burgundy. So again, my sincere condolences to the Izzards, Darrow and Victor, and everyone who uh, Lilla Willie touched. He definitely touched me. If you guys are hungry, si vous avez faim, you can check out Caribbean style over here and spicy, spicy pot. They got some food right now. If you enjoy that West Indian Caribbean food, you can go check them out. Si vous avez faim, y a des restos en arrière. Yeah, Caribbean style, a spicy pot, okay? I also want to acknowledge among us today La première juge noire au Québec, the first black judge in Quebec, Miss Juanita Westmoreland. <laughs> beautiful lady, beautiful soul. Always positive. We appreciate your presence today. And I also want to acknowledge Another gentleman doing a lot in the community, using his voice to make a difference for marginalized and racialized communities across Montreal. Mr. Balarama Honus is in the building today also. Where are you at, Balarama? He's somewhere around here. We appreciate your presence today, it means a lot. So, est-ce qu'il y a du monde qui sont prêts à danser et fêter avec nous un peu? Vous êtes sûr? Y'all ready to turn up a little? Yeah. Okay, so up next, we got the international renowned Cirque Calabonte. Maintenant, s'il vous plaît, applaudissez pour le célèbre Cirque Renommé Mondial Calabonte. Uh, 
Allô tout le monde, comment ça va? Ça va. Yes! Alors, quand je dis quelque chose, vous répondez, ok Ok Zeding Zadak Zeding Zada Zeding Zadak Zeding Zada Zeding Zaka Zeding Zaka Zeding Zaka Zeding Zaka Vous êtes prêts à danser Ok 